I, I just was like, this is, this is not funny. Oh my gosh. It was definitely one of those moments of like, what are we doing here? <laughs> are you Jeremy Davis? Dude, my little sister loves you. That's a long time ago now. Hey, hey, you can't fail if you don't try. How much inspiration did you take from your own experiences coming off a very popular teen drama? Uh, qu quite a bit, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot of absurdity in our worlds, um, you know, and the things that we've seen coming up in the business and being on a show like One Tree Hill, um, it exposes you um, to a lot of crazy stuff that you just never in your whole, you know, good and bad that, that you never anticipated seeing in your life. And so really it was about like taking our sort of... Um, the seeds of the world that we sort of know, and then just expanding it, making the characters bigger, making the world bigger, um, making their their shared history um, a lot more fraught, and um, just kind of trying to create that conflict so that we have all that sort of cringy, awkward humor that we really love, you know, mm -hmm. to uh, to work with. So, how similar are you guys compared to your character on the show? We we took uh, some things from our own, I think, personalities, you know. Um, to ground these characters, to make it feel like um, these characters are real. So we sort of played to our strengths, if you will. Like, um, I mean, for me, like what I, what we wanted from Jeremy is, you know, somebody who's um, almost too good at, 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 um, at chilling out. <laughs> he's almost, he's almost too happy to just sit around all day and, you know, read a book. I can relate to that, you know, like it's not who I am now, but it's who I have been in the past. Um, and complacency is something that I, you know, had to break myself out of at a certain point in my life. And, um, you know, that was a struggle to overcome that. Right. And so we felt like giving Jeremy that, um, but to a much higher degree and something that he's still going through at such a late stage in life when he should have grown out of it would be something really interesting for him to go through, but also something that I could connect with. Right. And I think with Seth, it's like, he's so, um, worried that, you know, he's going to get pigeonholed as the guy who was on the teen drama and that's all he's going to be his, his whole life. Um, that he, he, you know, he's so caught up in that and trying to drive away from that. And it's, I think it's ultimately uh, doing him more harm than good, having that be his motivation. So I think that, cause I, I, I remember, you know, it kind of it lasted with me for a long time um, internally, you know, throughout the majority of my twenties, um, of like, oh, you know, I wonder if people will even hire me because, you know, I was, I come from like a reality show and, and I learned later on, people were like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it, it doesn't matter, you know, where you come from, as long as you come into a room and show up and do good work, you're, you know, you're going to get hired. So the show ended five years ago. I'm sick of it. It's time to work. Even a play. I need to get on stage. And uh, Stephen, in the first episode, uh, it, that includes an audition where you are asked to perform a, a sex scene with a pillow. Does that scene take inspiration in a real life event? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, there was uh, an audition where, again, this is a lot of what the show, you know, we didn't, it, it wasn't exactly that. Um, a lot of the circumstances, the characters are, are all different. They're, they're setting something up uh, in, in, in the audition and it wasn't supposed to happen. It wasn't planned. And so my character's caught off guard. Um, then there was something similar that happened to me of something that was pulled in the room that I had to use. Uh, and, and I think that um, just that feeling of like, wow, we're going into the room and thinking you're going to do one thing. And then having to do something completely different, which was ultimately completely unnecessary. And really, you have to question the motivation of the people in the room. <laughs> um, that was something that I just never forgot, you know, I never forgotten. And I seemed to whenever I told that story to, to friends, they're like, wow, man, that's crazy that you do that. And I was like, yeah, well, so James and I talked about that. And then we were like, all right, how far can we take this? Let's <laughs> let's 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 get really ridiculous with this. So how is it filming an intimate scene with a pillow? <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, I didn't think it was very funny. That's for sure. Uh, everyone else seemed to think that it was uh, plenty enjoyable because uh, I, I mean, there's, yeah, I, I just was like, this is, this is not funny. Oh my gosh. It was definitely one of those moments of like, what are we doing here? <laughs> Fortunately, he didn't have to do it that many times. He did it so well the first time that we were like, okay, I think we got it. We can move on. We got up and I looked at James. I was like, hey, so what should we, 
what should we do here, man? You know, and I, cause I f- thought he'd be on the same page as me of like, well, this is, you know, we got to try something different. And he was like, dude, just, we're going to do it one more time. Mm-hmm. Just get another angle. That was hilarious. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the show also portrays uh, several quite like awkward and uncomfortable fan encounters. How are your own experiences with the awkward fan encounters? Yeah, you know, um, that's something that we wanted to really, we wanted to walk a line with um, conveying, you know, that that experience because what we show in the show, there's some fan encounters that that sort of come off as awkward, but they're, all, they're only awkward because there's something that is sort of misunderstood in the interaction, right? There's something that is lost in translation, sort of like, you know, maybe a fan will ask you like if you're still acting because they haven't seen you in anything for a long time. And it's a perfectly natural question to ask. Right. And you can't blame them at all for not knowing if you're still acting because you haven't been in something for a long time. And there's just this sort of like mismatch and then understanding of where they, they think you are in your life or you should be in your life and where you actually are. And that's really what we wanted to play with, right? It's it's not necessarily that fan interactions are awkward because they're not. They're always lovely and we're always grateful for them. But there can be things that happen in there that make you walk away from that inter- interaction feeling maybe just a little bit smaller or, you know, reminding you of where you're not in your life. It's a pretty relatable thing. I mean, all you have to do is think about when you go home for Christmas and see your family, um, you know, and they're asking you what you do with your life nowadays. And you know, either you see their face fall, either they're happy for you or they're sort of disappointed or they don't have any idea, you know, like we all go through it to some extent in some sector of our lives. And so that's what we were hoping people would um, sort of, you know, see and, and relate to in that, in, in those scenes. What you, Seth and Jeremy have, it's very special. So hang on to that. 